Ciao. All right. Ciao. Jenna wouldn't be with us this morning. So. Joe? Joe. Yeah, she oh. said her love. Thank yeah. you. Well, it's good to have Janet with us. Yes. In Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always nice to see you guys. <laughs> yep. You know, so. Well, we had, we just, all we did is play, right? When you were here, we, Bernie and I went out and did things and enjoyed the atmosphere. Yeah. 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 It's always good to see Jan and Bernie. I always heard, I heard you were a water skier at one time. Oh, yeah. No, I was. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I heard that. I thought, wow. Yeah, I used to water ski. I even went, I went over a, a, a lift, a jump. Holy smokes. Yeah. Or are you doing, you're doing flips and all kind of stuff, huh? We used to go to Sunken, um, no, Cypress Gardens, and we used to make a pyramid. I'd be the one on top. Oh, wow. Really? Wow. Holy pyramid. smokes. <laughs> yeah, I, I even tried to barefoot, but I couldn't master that. <laughs> you, you tried made, that. You did that you, on my on my phone. In Connecticut on the Connecticut River. Yeah. Not, not, no, no, no. I, I, I saw them, but I did not. I tried to. Oh, with uh, the pyramid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the pyramid. And also, um, I tried to, uh, um, the, the barefoot. And I couldn't answer that. I thought you barefooted behind my boat. No, yes, no, I went to, I, you on have the chance. We saw you. You did it barefoot. Yeah. I don't think so, dear. You're forgetting, Jan. I, no. I told you off, and I was worried about you did it. Did it? I slalomed behind your back. Your back. I did not barefoot. Slalom is one single ski. Now, yeah, you did that you did too. That but too. you did barefoot. I'm yeah, telling you, you did, one, Jan. One time when we were coming back from going out, <laughs> the water was like glass. <laughs> and you said, this is the kind, the way you can barefoot. And you did. So <laughs> you have forgotten. I Well, you're honoring me, but I don't think I did. <laughs> yeah, um, say you got to trust tried, them. I tried to walk on water once and it didn't work. <laughs> hey, I know somebody who did that. <laughs> yeah. I know he about did. somebody. Yes. Peter did too, right? That's who did. That's Peter. right. Yeah. What do you think about that? I mean, here they were flesh and blood, right? Physical bodies walking on water. Yeah. All, all things are possible with God. Right. You know, the thing is, remember, remember the law of life in Christ Jesus. Right. Makes us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. And just like the law of lift, it doesn't make gravity disappear. The law of gravity is still there, mm. but the law of lift supersedes, supersedes. gravity. Yeah. And the spirit of life in Christ Jesus supersedes the natural life. Yes. You know, I was just looking this morning where Jesus looked up. Where's my notes? Where, where did I put my notebook? Uh, when Jesus looked up and and bless the bread mm -hmm. that was interesting uh in uh, luke 9 uh jesus looked up and and he blessed the bread that word look looked is analebo and an is a prefix and as a prefix what that the word Anna Lebo means is to recover sight. Mm. To recover sight. Mm. So when he looked up, mm. Mm. he was looking away from the bread mm. that was not sufficient to feed that multitude. Mm. But awesome. when he looked up, 
He was recovering his sight. Mm. He was seeing the provision. Mm. Okay? It, that word, uh, when the prefix and is added, it means a repetition, intensity, or a reversal. Mm. So he saw in the natural what was presented to him. Wow. But then he looked up and he recovered his sight mm. to see what the father sees. Yeah. That is very interesting because you know what? That brings me back to Mark 11 mm. where Jesus, let me turn there. Mark 11. Thank you, Jesus. Can we see? Can we see what he sees? She needs to spray paint all of her pages because they're all colors. <laughs> he says, remember, they saw they were coming back out of Jerusalem and they were shocked that the fig tree was withered up. Yeah. But the thing is, it was cursed from the root. That's right. It just mm -hmm. took a day for it to show up. Yeah. But from the moment that Jesus cursed that fig tree, it was dead. Mm. And it's the same thing. You can take a, a branch and cut it off of a tree. Yeah. And it won't look dead right away. That's true. Okay. And as I was thinking about this, I was I was telling my husband, it reminded me years ago our granddaughter Rachel. She had these two baker's cysts, one on the back of the knee and one on her neck. And it was in a gland on her neck. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, Rachel, that one on the back of your leg will eventually go away. But that one in your neck, you will always have with you because it's in a gland. And so she came up one Sunday morning and she said, Nana, would you pray that these would go away? I hate them. So I prayed. And the next morning, my daughter-in-law called me and she says, Ma, Rachel woke up and the baker's cyst on the back of her leg is gone. Mm. I said, well, praise the Lord. How about her neck? She said, no, it's still there. Every time I saw my granddaughter, I'd say, Rachel, how's your neck? And mm. she'd go, it's still there, Nana. <laughs> and every time I'd see her, I'd say, Rachel, how's your neck? And she eventually started to get a little perturbed with me. Yeah. yeah. But you see, I never let go. I never stopped seeing what I saw. Mm -hmm. She didn't see it, but I still saw it, even though you couldn't see it. Right. And then finally she goes, Nana, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. She's going to scold you again. She was really going to lay into me this time. But you know what? Faith is believing what you can't see. Mm -hmm. It's the evidence. Yeah. Faith is the evidence. I mean, when you know, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, just because you don't see it, you don't let go. Right. And so Jesus said to the disciples, when they saw the destruction of this victory, he said, have the faith of God. Yes, faith of God. Faith yeah. of God. Mm. You know, what is he saying? Have the faith of God. Mm. If you can believe what God believes about you, that you're his child, mm -hmm. that he's given you the kingdom, that he's given you authority in his name. You know, in in uh Matthew 28, 18, he said. All authority is given unto me. Mm. Therefore, what does that mean? Therefore, it's in the power of this authority, you go. Mm. In the authority of the name of Jesus, okay? 
I mean, <clears throat> we have authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. In, in Isaiah 54, he says, In righteousness thou shalt be established. Mm. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you will condemn it. This is your inheritance. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Mm. So by what authority can I say no to every accusing tongue against me? The authority that God gave me. Mm. He gave me his very own righteousness. It's just like the prodigal. Mm -hmm. When he came, he put that robe of righteousness on him and he put the ring of authority. Mm -hmm. What authority? My father said so. Yeah, and you think about the elder, the elder son too, that he had the same, he has the same robe, the same ring, the same shoes, right? Everything the father says, everything I have belongs to you. It's yours. The difference is he didn't he didn't receive it. Exactly. The difference is he didn't acknowledge it. He didn't receive it. Exactly. Although, although it was his, and it, it really talks about you know us standing in that our identity, our finished work. Everything that the yeah. father has belongs to us. Absolutely. If we don't believe it, how are, how is it going to do us any good? It's not going to do you any good. It's not. Believing is faith. And so he says, he says, so have, have the faith of God. He said, for truly, I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, it's not good enough to think it. Right. Remember, he says, if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. Paul says, as you receive the Lord Jesus, continue to walk in him. Start. The same way. Same way. You agree with God. You believe in your heart what God says. And you Faith speaks. Mm. You got to let it come out of your mouth. Mm. And he says, if you doubt not in your heart. Now, I know that people said, well, he was talking to, you know, the mountain where the temple mount was. Mm. But this is, what is coming against you? What mountain stands in front of you and says, no, you won't? Okay, either that sucker is going to call it, talk to you and tell you you can't, mm -hmm. or you're going to stand believing what God has said about you, right? And you're going to tell it to get out of your way. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to get rolled over or you're going to roll it over. One of the two. Mm -hmm. There's only one victor. Mm -hmm. We agree with God. We yeah. say the same thing that God says. Yeah. And even when you don't see it move, when you know that you know, that let God be true and every man a liar. And I don't care if it's my own body resisting and saying, no, you're not healed. Mm -hmm. If you continue to agree with God and not let go. You have it. Amen. He says, he says, he says, be thou removed and be cast in the sea and shall not doubt in your heart. I'm so glad he said in your heart because there'll be all kinds of squirrely thoughts come in your head. Because hmm. the mind, the mind will turn around and say, oh, that's it. I mean, I've had that happen to me. I've had my mind in the middle of a miracle say, you can't do that. That's impossible. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Well, let me just cast that imagination down and just let God, let, let faith work. Do what God said. Mm. And it's awesome. And he says, if you believe those things which you say, then you shall have whatsoever you say. You know, he emphasized that three times. Mm. What you say. Mm. Faith speaks. Faith speaks. Mm. And so many times, <laughs> it'll sound like you're crazy. Yeah. But you know what? When you know in your heart what God has said to you, you will speak it. Right. Because you're actually Actually, I mean, remember the mind, the mind is the womb of conception. And when you conceive something, you see it in your imagination and you speak that sucker, you're giving birth to it. You're letting it come out of your mouth. It's a creative force. Our words are a creative force. You know, God didn't just think the universe into existence. He said it. And we are created in his image and in his likeness. You know, I was looking at um, that scripture in um, John 7, 37 through 39. In that last great day of the feast. Let me turn there. In that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said. So the scripture spoke about this. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But that word belly, out of your belly, it means cavity, the heart. Out of your heart. It also means the matrix, which is an environment in which something develops. A surrounding medium or structure. Stop and think about that. Jesus said the sower sows the word into the heart. And the environment of our heart produces. It's going to produce whatever you put in there. Mm. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. So when Jesus says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, what is he saying? Out of your belly. Well, we know that here, the belly is the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when we receive the spirit and we, our heart is meditating on God's word and God's truth, and then out of our heart comes the issues of life. That's why in Proverbs 4.20, it says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of the it comes the issues of life. And it was interesting because Phelan spoke on that. And, and I looked it up to confirm it because I never just take anything for fact. I got to confirm it. And one of the meanings of that uh, issues is borders, mm. the extremities. And so a man can never live beyond the borders of what his heart believes. Mm. 
And you know, when I see that and when I say that, it makes me say, God, Father, I want to believe everything you believe. Mm -hmm. Because I want to see your life manifest in this mortal body. Yes. But we can never live beyond what our heart is persuaded of. Don't that make you want to be persuaded? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but everything God's persuaded of? You know, in Proverbs 18, remember that. It's taught, you know, Jesus said it is written, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Well, this is one of the cross references. Uh, 18.4. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. And the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, Jesus, he said, the words that I speak unto you, they're spirit and they're yeah. life. When we are full of the Holy Spirit, we're full of his life. And we just want to speak life and blessing to people. Mm -hmm. Wherever we go. I mean, this world is such a dark place. And it's so wonderful to be able to give someone good news. You know, and, and too, that, you know, the world, um, is, the world is seeking life where life can't be found. Yeah, correct. You know, and they're, they're seeking it in the abundance of things. You know, they think that the things in life is going to bring them life. Yeah. And and so many walk in, in still such bondage and a yeah. dark place because the only place that there there is life is in Christ. Absolutely. You know? Oh, and he's the source come of all life. Have, what's that? He's the source of all life. Yeah. And so when we look at the faith, we look at Jesus who came, the word, you know, and what what was he busy with? What was he busy uh thinking about? And where his life was, you know, what gospel did he believe, which will blow right. a lot of people's minds. <laughs> right. You know? you know, as he said, he said, he said, I don't do anything except I thought I see my father do it. And right. Jesus came to reveal the heart of the father. Mm -hmm. And so everything Jesus did was reflecting the father's heart. Mm. Yeah. You know, when Jesus saw people hungry, it was the Father's heart to provide for them. Okay? When he saw them sick or possessed of the devil, it was the Father's heart to set them free. Yes. Okay? And he hasn't changed. Mm. I mean, still, I mean, listen. If you get healed of an infirmity, but you don't have eternal life, well, that's sad, okay? But the thing is, we have eternal life, okay? We have eternal life. And uh, praise God, you know, when I put off this body, I'm going to be with the Lord. But in the meantime, I got to live in this body. Mm -hmm. And I want this body to cooperate with God. Oh, yeah. Amen. I don't want to be dragging it around like a dead body. I want it to be energized. Right. I want it to be quickened by the spirit of the living God. And listen, why shouldn't it be quickened by the spirit of the living God? I think we saw it on the inside of me. Yeah. It's the life that conquered death on the inside of me. Why shouldn't it conquer any sickness and disease that would try to come against my life? Isn't that crazy? See, when you think like that, I you know what that is. That's faith. Yeah, well, I just I just know the heart of my father. Oh, that's faith. Yeah, he doesn't take any pleasure in me suffering, you know. You know, there, there's a script, scripture in uh, uh, Psalm 78, 41. 
it says, well, start at 40. It says, how often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Mm -hmm. Yay. They turned back and tempted God and they limited the Holy mm -hmm. One of Israel. They remembered not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Mm -hmm. If they'd have only remembered Mm -hmm. When God delivered them from the enemy, they would have said, hey, the same God that delivered us from the enemy back then is going to deliver us from the enemy that's before us. Mm -hmm. right. But they limited the, him. God never changes. Through their unbelief. Mm -hmm. And as I said, as Fallon uh, pointed out, the issues of life. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. It's the borders. Mm -hmm. It's the extremities. You can't live beyond what your heart is persuaded belongs to you. That's right. Well, we can put our state, you, you know, we talked about strongholds, you know, um, last week and how you. Oh, that was so good. I've meditated on that. Yeah, you can put your stake in the ground. Um, either in a good way or, or an evil way. That's right. Anyway, you know, and, you know, like I said, I think a lot of our belief systems or theology or doctrine have come out of offense a lot of times. Um, right. Because maybe uh, we prayed something, it didn't happen. So we, we form our own doctrine around that experience instead, exactly. of, uh, of, instead of staying with the word and saying, you know, my experiences can change, but God's word doesn't change. You know? Exactly. He's the same yesterday, today. And we know that we know that that God is not in the, in, is not in the death business. He's not in the no. condemnation no. business. He's not in the sickness business. No. All these things. He he didn't Jesus didn't come to promote sickness. He came to take it away. He come came on to destroy now. the works of the devil. You know, that's right amen all the, all the works of, of death and the devil and and all that that pertains so it's absolutely just, we absolutely. see that and to deny that is to deny the truth of what absolutely. it is you know? so, and when you see when you see you know when it when it says that jesus carried our sicknesses and our, our infirmities he took it he took it into his body and you know when it says that his visage was so badly marred, you couldn't recognize him? It wasn't because of the pugilism of the Roman soldiers. It's because he took every sickness and disease into his body. He was unrecognizable. Mm. We, we see that he took our sin into his body. But he also took our sicknesses into his body. It says curse. He says, we've been delivered from the curse of the law. What was the curse? If you read in Deuteronomy 28, all of those curses, okay, mm. was every miserable botch and boil and itch and fever mm. and everything. Mm. He became a curse for us that we could be delivered from it. Mm. And so I was... It came into my mind this morning, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, when it was talking about communion, and it says there's many sick mm -hmm. and dead because they didn't discern the Lord's body. Right. They didn't see what he did for them. Mm -hmm. He took those sicknesses. I mean, I, you know, some people, they will resist sickness as much as they would resist sin. Mm -hmm. We resist sin. Why do we accept sickness? Well, they don't, they don't accept it because they go to the doctor to fight it. Come on now. <laughs> That's yeah. right. I it's mean, so it's, just where you're, it's where you're going to, to put it down. That is exactly the truth, Rick. That is exactly the truth. People say, I don't believe in healing. Well, why don't you just stay and be sick and die? 
because yeah. you're going to and, the and doctor. Also, I think that discerning the Lord's body is discerning who we are as the body of Christ. Absolutely. You know but that we you are the body. We are the body of Christ, and identify. I don't identify with this body of corruption. Although this no. it's a body of you know this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, but but soon corruption's going to be put off and incorruption. Absolutely. And so I identify more with the resurrected Jesus Christ who sits at the right hand of the, of, of the father. That's what he says all through scripture. Identify yourself with my body. Amen. You are yes. the body of Christ. So I was just listening to a testimony yesterday of oral Roberts and you know something. Oh my goodness. Jim's mom was a big advocate of Oral Roberts. Oh, yeah. She sent him a dollar every week. I think. And she'd send us a dollar to send. She was very poor. I got a picture in front, me and Dan in front of the praying hands. Okay. Who are you? Well, this testimony was how Oral Roberts had to have replacement shoulders put in because he had laid his hands on so many people. He had worn out his rotor cuffs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And after having the shoulder replacement, he had appendicitis. Mm. And he had his if appendix was swollen and he had to have his appendix out. And he was in the hospital getting ready to have the surgery. And the doctor and Richard Roberts was looking through the window at the x-ray going on on Oral Roberts. And Oral Roberts just said, you know what? I have had my last surgery. I am not having any more surgery. And as he said it, the doctor said to Richard, are you seeing what I'm seeing? His appendix went down right before his eyes went normal so you know what he could have let him put him under the knife and take it out but you know what he just said no way and sometimes I mean that's just when it's just like what happened to me on the treadmill here going through the motions of that going to the doctor every month at the oncologist but all of a sudden faith just wham in my heart and I said this is it, you know, and when faith works, when faith happens to you, it's not you, it's when faith does you, when faith explodes in your heart, and it's like, oh, Lord, I love it when faith does me. Yeah, and I think that's where we go back to that, the teaching, you know, that it's, it's about our faith, you know, and uh, that's put a lot of people under a lot of condemnation. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's, yeah. It causes them to think that, you know, I mean, you know, that, you know, just puts people under, I didn't have enough faith. Well, we all have yeah. a measure of faith, right? And uh, I'm, I'm glad you said that because it was faith that persuaded you. You responded, Absolutely. you responded to the faith. But you know what happened? Remember, I was listening to the word. Right. And faith comes. By hearing. By hearing. And hearing. And hearing. <laughs> and hearing. And hearing. I heard another testimony of this pastor that I don't know when this was, but it was somewhere overseas, and they had four services on Sunday. 50,000 mm. in each service. That's 200,000 people in that church. Mm. And one of the pastors was shocked when he was a young man and it obliterated his elbow. So he had to have a replacement elbow, a metal elbow put in. Yeah. And all of his life, he suffered in pain from that elbow. Mm. And he had been working so hard and the Lord said to him, mm. I want you to go home and rest. You have been working so hard for me. Now let me work for you. Mm. And he went home and he went into a deep sleep. And when he woke up in the morning, his metal elbow 
was in the bed next to him. Lying next to his arm. Mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. had given him a brand new elbow painting. Wow. <laughs> awesome? Yeah. You know, yeah. Jesus, listen. It's all I'm saying is Jesus said this. All things are possible. To Don't him. limit God. Don't limit God. And also, we can't limit God how he sometimes uh, mm -hmm. works and does things. You know, I was thinking about you know, where Deanne, she was really, you know, had some uh, problems with arthritis trying to come on her and, and okay. you know, lie to her and and all these things, you know. I mean, it was a few couple of years ago. It was like, you know, in the natural, it was getting like <laughs> very bothersome. But she began to just pray and ask the Lord about it. And he directed her on how to eat different. Absolutely. And and, yeah. and because of the eating, she began to eat different than, and well, I'm saying this because we're being poisoned every day. Absolutely. Amen. By this country. Yes, <laughs> uh, we are. Go to the, most of the middle aisles of the grocery store. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of it's just poison, you know, yeah. it's chemicals, it's stuff. And, uh, and so it's, there's wisdom to go along with this, you know, it's just like, I can't go to McDonald's every day and eat a, a, a you know, a Big Mac, you know, supersize it and expect to walk in divine health. I exactly. guess I could, but, you know, I don't know. I, it just, I'm just saying that there's some wisdom behind that too, that, you know, and I was thinking of Greg when he, he was, uh, I think it was when he was here at the first conference that he was, he was at a place where they were telling him, I mean, he could just fall over dead at any minute or whatever. From all kind of blood types stuff going on yeah. and and it was matt moore that got a word about this emergency vitamin c. you know the, the vitamin c emergency yeah. he says maybe he says maybe you know pray about this and and so he felt like the lord said take it and it cleared everything up isn't that something Amen. You know? so it's Amen. Like, yeah. let me tell you something you can't take what God told him to do no. and think it'll do the same for you. No. Right. It's in yeah. being obedient to what the Lord told you. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oral Roberts prophesied over me when I was four years old. <laughs> yeah, it was quite an experience. That's awesome. Yeah, my mother got, she had a, she always sent a dollar to Oral Roberts. <laughs> yeah, always. my mom too. Yeah. yeah. Every time she had an extra dollar, that's where it went. And you know, it's so funny because she sent my son an Oral Roberts Bible. And I'm telling you something. It would, no. You know what? No, excuse me. I misspoke. He sent Oral Roberts a dollar because his because his grandmother used started sending him a dollar to send to Oral Roberts, mm. and Oral Roberts sent him a Bible huh. and a letter to him. Wow! Wow! wow eh? Eric cool. gave. His dollar allowance every week to Oral Roberts, <laughs> and you know, I, I, I mean, he's a blessed guy. I mean, my son is just—I don't know if it was because his heart was so into giving, you know, to Oral Roberts. But boy, I'll tell you one thing: that kid has had more miracles more miracles and dreams and visions yeah. than anybody I know. He has visions and dreams, well, all dreams, in the middle of the night telling him what's going on with all the employees in his work. Mm. And yeah. he can tell them all what they need to do. Yeah. So That happens um, a lot. Yeah. Mm. So praise the Lord. Um, yeah. That, yeah, I'm, I'm just true. saying what the, you know, what in the, in the country or the, it's just the world again. And it really goes yeah. back to, to life or, or death, 
And a lot of times we're seeking comfort through comfort food. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, called sugar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of sugar. And, you know, I'm, listen, <laughs> I've had my fill of sugar, believe me. And I've got a sweet tooth. But uh, I'm just saying that, and I guess, I guess my wife has kind of been the Holy Spirit to me in, in those series. <laughs> and uh, I'll resist. I'll resist her a lot in those areas, <laughs> but, but it just, uh, I'm just thinking about the whole, the whole counsel of God too, and how he counsels us. Yeah, yeah like we, we can't put them in a box. We just yeah. know that, you know, everything that Beulah said is true, yeah. right? So like, for instance, for me, um, like, being delivered from smoking, quitting smoking. I, I asked for a miracle, which I realized when I asked for that miracle, I had never asked God for a miracle. I had mm. never in my Christian life ever asked God for, not for myself, right? Praying for others maybe, but not, not for a miracle for myself. Right. And, um, I mean, I had been on a two-year process of working it out with my doctor, with going on the patches and the different nicotine replacement things. And, man, this was a stronghold, I tell you. But I asked for that miracle, and within two weeks, December, it'll be just four years December 4th, that um, I just gave it up. You know, yeah. I just gave it up. And it just happened so naturally. That's what I love about these manifestations yes. of the face of God, right? And that's why he, like, during that same season, he was really working his love into me. Like, that was the only thing that mattered in his heart was let me love you. So even through the process of just wanting to quit so bad, like I hated everything about it, you know, mm -hmm. and I just through that couple weeks before I quit, he was just loving me and I was just receiving it. And so much so that I had forgotten about wanting to quit smoking. I was smoking during this whole time, mm -hmm. but that desperate, you know, like, um, Greg's been preaching about recently. He's mentioned it a few times. The resisting evil, right? Mm -hmm. It's like quitting smoking in my own strength, right? right. Was never. It just wasn't going to work because I was so determined to do it based yeah. on the root that brought yeah. it about, right? Yeah. There was a root in there that brought about that manifestation. I had smoked since I was 12 years old. Right. And I quit on and off, but um this time this time was so it's been so different and he did it. So even in that situation, like time wise, like a timeline, and I've uh, that's where, you know, I take the promises of God when it comes to certain things, like my relationship with my kids, right? Um, I know he's going to bring us back together where they're going to find the faith. He did it with my relationship with my dad, even though it took until I was 50 years old. And, you know, it took a long time. So I, I mean, I, he gives us these um, experiences even that increase our faith. It's like you said about the Israelites, like, don't forget, right? Exactly. Well, I have yeah, I haven't forgotten how he's restored my relationship with God, which is mm. such a miracle, such a miracle mm. that he's, you know, I have no doubt that he's going to do that with me and my children, mm. you yeah. know, and yeah. so it's that time thing, too. We can't put God in a box as exactly. far as time, as long yes. as we're resting in the faith yes. and we have we have peace that he's going to yes. bring it about. And we're not striving and looking for other ways, even yeah. though we might be tempted once in a while. Yeah. You know, we'll, yeah, we'll be tempted. But, yeah. It's rest. Yep, yeah. yeah. Faith is to bring you into rest. Yeah. It's, it's, the faith is to bring you to the place 
way you trust your heavenly father. Yeah. Everything. And you know, that reminded me what you just said in Psalm 103. David said, um, bless the Lord, O my soul, and yeah, forget he's... not all of his benefits, yeah. how he healed all of your diseases and forgave all of your iniquities. Yes. And, you know, don't forget. It's very important to remember. Uh -huh. In remembering God's faithfulness, mm. it gives you the, the strength to believe that what he did there, he'll do now and he'll do in the future. He continues. And he also... Yes, it yes it's the foundation. It really is. It is. And the longer you are walking with the Lord, the more you got to look back at what he's done. And it's so amazing. I mean, sometimes we would just sit and reiterate some of the things and we forget so much because God has done so much in our lives and mm. healed us yeah. so many times. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, he didn't bring me out to die in the wilderness. <laughs> no. He brought me he out. He began a good work. Yeah. And he'll and be faithful to complete it. So he goes on to say in that psalm, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. You know, David's saying, whatever diseases I had, he healed them all. And that's under the old covenant. Yeah. And we have a covenant with far greater promises. Okay. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. That's Hasid. Who satisfies thy mouth with good. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Mm -hmm. So what is this mouth being satisfied with? I don't think he's talking about food. Mm. <laughs> I think I, the decla declaration of the goodness of God that he's come always... On, that's exactly yeah. it. And yeah. that's it right there. Who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Yeah, Guess what? <clears throat> he's speaking what God is speaking about him, and right. he's being renewed like the eagle. That's yeah. exactly what happens, too, when we start declaring the goodness of God, right? Nothing inhabits our physical <laughs> or, or anything in the atmosphere and the natural. Everything just feels brand new like a like a baby like we're youth exactly and that word satisfied it brought me to uh proverbs 18 and 20 it says a man's belly that's the heart shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth so when, when David said, he satisfies my mouth with good things, it's the good word that's coming out of his mouth. Yes, he's agreeing yes. with God. So it says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips, he will be filled. Death and life, or in the power of the tongue, and they that love it Who's shall there? eat the fruit thereof. What they that love it, love what? Love life. Mm -hmm. They that love life. And you know, Peter said the same thing. Let me see if I can find him. It says, In 1 Peter 3 and 8, 
finally, be all of one mind, having compassion on one another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary ones. On the contrary, um, blessing, knowing that ye that are there unto fall, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life. This sounds just like Proverbs 18.20. He that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Amen. And his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil. and do good, and let him seek peace, and ensue, pursue peace. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is upon them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good. Yeah. Pretty awesome. <clears throat> we answer the Lord. If you are if you are just uh loving life and doing good, who's who's gonna hurt you? Nobody. It's, you, it's the most Amen. high God. You're dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. But how many times, remember, remember that scripture, uh, it's in, uh, I think it's, uh, is it First Corinthians 10? How they, they murmured? Yes. Were destroyed of the destroyer? Yeah. Yes. He said, learn, this is for your instruction. And then Philippians 2, it says, it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, verse 12, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, okay? For it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So what he's saying is, as you, as you perceive and comprehend the awesome work that God has wrought on the inside of you, you stand in awe of what he's done. And because you're standing in awe of what he's done, you're allowing him to work it out because you know it's both him giving you the will and the ability to do whatever he wants. And then it says, do all things Mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. murmuring and disputing. Don't cancel out what God's doing yeah. by speaking against what he's doing. You know, confess is to say the same thing that God says. Yes, Homologeo, to say in union with every good thing. God, I know I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord, to give you a future and an expected end. That's what we want to agree with. We don't want to discount it. We don't want to make it void of or none effect because we disagree. Amen. It just... I mean, people, people will just say, uh, I mean, hey, you know, as you get older, you're around older people, you know? And it's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just getting senile. You know, it's just a part of getting old, you know? I, I'm like, no, no.
No way. He renews my youth like the eagle. This is what God says. Let me ask you something. Do you think it's going to benefit me to disagree with God? No. There is no life in it. It's common, though. It's very common. But there I'm, is no that's, life. That's speaking old thing. You know, I was tempted to do that yesterday when I turned 65. Yeah. <laughs> But I would just actually, I wasn't. I would just, I was messing with my wife a little bit about that. She said, You will not speak old, you know. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, Rick. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But you know, a lot of people will, will, can talk themselves right into the ground, you know. Exactly. Right I know, I know personally some that did really because they start speaking it. I mean, they were speaking it, uh, they were speaking it in their 50s and before they turned 60 they were in the ground and I it's been trying to come on me it's i'm turning 54 this month and it's been trying to come on me all year but god knows better and my heart knows better right so even though it's been persistent to try to come on me because my health has been touch and go since I came out of the hospital. So it's had a little bit of uh, natural kernel evidence to throw at me, right? Mm -hmm. But God is greater. God is greater. That is exactly what God told me was what Beulah quoted out of Jeremiah. That, I, you know, I know the plans that he has for me. And it's a, it's a future and it's a prosperous future that doesn't include um aches and pains and a hip replacement <laughs> and all that stuff that you got an expected you know. end. Yeah. An expected right. End. Yes. Says, is, we've got to come into a great hope with God. Well it's a communication of death or life. Yes. You know. Are you gonna yeah. are you communicating with those mm -hmm. that that have no hope? You know, are you are you are you are you you know what I'm saying? Are you Inheriting that language, are you communicating the communication of the death or the living? You got this. No? Yeah, but you don't understand. Both my mother and my father died of this. Kim died off. Yeah. Jesus, all this passed away. You're breaking up a little. That's okay. I just want to look so. You're a brand new creature in mm -hmm. Christ. Yeah. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are a creature that never existed before. New creation. Married to yeah. Christ. Who cares what your mother and father died of? You're the body of Christ. Exactly. You're not the body of death. You're the exactly. body of Christ. And he says, and this brings new light to even scriptures like this in Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. That's it. That's very right. that which is good to the use of edifying that it That's may minister right. grace to the hearer. He's talking about you, Excellent. not just you know speaking out to others, but speaking to yourself. What are you speaking to yourself? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. What are you communicating to yourself? You know, um, you know, the scripture it? says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit drieth up the bones. Now, let me tell you something. A merry heart speaks, and so does a broken spirit. Mm -hmm. And dries yeah. up bones, that's osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. Okay? People that have brittle bones, mm -hmm. they have no moisture in their bones. What are they speaking out of their mouth? I know when my heart is merry, Oh man, I'm praising. Hallelujah. I'm glorying in God. Well, whose report are we believing? Exactly. And you know, I was reading this morning um, in Psalm 8. Let me tell you something. Not in earth of the enemy uh, coming against me. Mm. I got to tell you something. I had a walk this morning. 
The devil wants to take me out. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> You want to take us all out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But you know what? We got to know. We've got to know who we are and the weapons that God has given us to war against this enemy. And the one that I saw this morning in uh, Psalm 8, verse 2, out of the mouth of faith. Well, let me start with verse 1. Oh, Lord. Our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. Now, Jesus quoted this scripture, and he says, ordained praise. That's right. Praise is our strength. Perfected praise. He has ordained strength because of thine enemies. That thou mayest steal the enemy and the avenger. Hallelujah. And I was listening to a testimony uh, yesterday of, a, of someone who had a disc in their back exploded. And when it exploded, a piece of it was embedded in the nerve in his back. And the pain was excruciating. And he said, I am not having back surgery. I'm going to get this healing by faith or I ain't getting it. And he put on heating pads on both ankles and turned it up as hot as it could be so that it would distract from the pain in his back, okay? And he sat on his back porch and he looked and he praised God. At the top of his lungs, he praised God for the trees and the birds and the flowers. And he praised God that his head wasn't hurting and his arms weren't hurting and his hair wasn't hurting. Anything he could find to praise God for. He's like, it's just my back. Okay? So I pray and he says, as I began to praise, all pain went. And then I just sat back and relaxed and I was thinking of the goodness of God. But as I was thinking on the goodness of God, it wasn't doing anything. I started again, and I began to praise and thank God. And as I did, all the pain went away. And it's like, do we realize that God has given us this, that we can still be avenger? That we can... You know, the, James says, submit yourself unto God and resist the devil. You know, and it's he like, will flee. he will flee. He will flee. And I'll tell you one thing he don't want to hear is praise. And I really believe, you know, we know the scripture says he has every musical instrument in him. And I still think he still has them in him. And when we praise all of those instruments reverberate the praises of God. Praising, praising our music. Yeah. Can you imagine our songs being resonating in his body? He hates it. He's out of here. The Lord has given us that. That's a new thought, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I just praise the Lord. Don't praise. you think don't you think all these distractions in this world has kept the people from praising God? Because the, the, what they're doing is they're they they're here in the natural and not praising God for who he is and how his goodness is and what he's done for us. So what we're doing, we're living down here. And basically I think a lot of it's because of the entertainment that's going on. 
and we were entertained by everything except God. Yeah. You know? And because of that, you know, instead of praising God, we see all the um the the death, the the destruction, and and uh we don't know who God is. That's yeah, right. We're beholding, really. Are we yep. beholding Christ as our life? That's right. And we want to make sure that we're we're not saying that it's just a formula that we're just trying yeah. to, to to promote, you know, because we know that works. So you can do anything by the flesh, and flesh will not benefit anything. I don't but, care what you do, you know. By the the spirit, uh, um, the flesh profits nothing. It's a spirit that gives life. But it's really it's it's what we're beholding and praise. You set your affections on things above. And not on things on, on this earth. So it's it's like your heart is your 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 focus isn't on the death, but on on the life and that the, the life that we have in Christ, you know. And to it's me, that good. life then begins to manifest in this mortal body. You're either going to focus on life or death, whatever right. it's going to be. If you focus on life, and like you said, not to make it a formula. But because we know this word and what it says to us, and we focus on that, it brings you right out of that that death, that depression. Absolutely, absolutely. He said, you know, and uh, David said in the sixty third Psalm, "Oh God, Thou art my God; early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsteth for Thee; my flesh longeth for You." as in a dry and thirsty land when no water is, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because of thy loving kindness. There's a because. God is worthy of all of our praise because he is good. Amen? Yes. No matter what we're going through, God is worthy of praise. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Yes. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Mm -hmm. When I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Yes. There is a because. We praise because God is worthy of all of our praise. Right. Well, when our hearts are persuaded to believe who God really is, you know, and that yeah. he's a good, good father, you know, and that he yes. will hold nothing from, you know, it's just like when we really coming into the knowledge and the truth of who seeing who God is, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what Jesus came to, to declare who the father was because nobody had ever seen him or known him. Amen. You know? And it's just like, uh, you know, you, I know with me, it's effortless. Praise just comes out of me because my heart is so um moved by the goodness and the love of god you know it just i can't help but praise him it's like david right he he praised god you know because of his goodness yeah. goodness of the lord but um you know for some for some and but what i'm saying is too and i'm not saying that maybe one can't maybe help promote the other too but you know there's a lot of praise that's uh, goes on that's just kind of just just you know it just kind of the motions you know and and uh but there's a praise that just comes out of your innermost being that just flows out of you but it's it's beholding you know it's like you said when you behold the goodness of god when you see the, you, when you remember the history that you have with the lord you know, and how he has delivered you and healed you. And, and, and that's not just what he's done, but for who he is. Absolutely. He's a good, good God, you know? Yes. And, you know, um, in, um, in Psalm 68, it says, let God arise, 
let his enemies be scattered. Let them that hate him flee before him. And what I'm trying to say is, sometimes there can be such an attack. Mm -hmm. You need God to arise. Amen. Okay. You need, I mean, like now, you need God to arise. And so you begin to remember his goodness, remember what he's done, and begin to praise him for who he is. And those that hate God will flee. And that's the enemy and every evil spirit that's trying to take you down. Well, I know the difference for me is, you know, of course, we, li we live in a world full of contradiction. Yes. And we live in a world full of opposition to the truth and things yep. always trying to come and press in and, you know, on all of us. It's not yes. just, you know, it's it's every single one of us. Amen. I know what his work for me is, is, and it's not a law for everyone. It just works for me is when I get up in the morning, you know, the first thing I do is put on the word. Oh you know, yes, I absolutely. Word, I begin to listen to worship, and 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 it's what happens is the gift is stirred up oh, inside. Yeah. Me. The gift absolutely. that has been given to me yeah. already is stirred up. It keeps it keeps it stirred up. If that makes any sense. Oh yeah, yeah. that's it's true. Just like, it's just like well, you know, I can allow the world to stir me up in a different way. Oh. You know, in the flesh. But how do you want to be stirred? You know. Yeah, it's so you know, true. And it's you like, know, where, where'd your ear bent to? What are you listening to? What do you feed? And it goes back to what table are you feeding yeah. at? You know, also, yeah. I know, I know me, I can sit and listen to certain things and I can be in the flesh in a heartbeat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no matter how long I've known the Lord and been saved and known the goodness of God, I can be, I can be in oh, a yeah. totally different attitude to where my wife is like, who is this person? Exactly. You know? So true, Rick. So yeah. true. <laughs> I remember I remember some time ago, it was a movie I watched, and somebody was being mean to a kid. And, and I turned around and I said, Oh, what a beast, or something like that. And I'm like, you know, it's like I was identifying with the man according to sin. And not according to what God said. It's only a movie. But the thing is, if you do that with a movie, you're going to do the same thing in real life. Amen. You want to pull your sword out and <laughs> go to work on the man in the movie. Yeah, you know? exactly. Throws up these fleshly passions, you know? Amen. You know, there's so much about giving thanks and praise and Psalm 107, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy yes. endureth forever. Yes. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, yes. whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. But you know, and it goes on to say in verse 8, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness mm -hmm. and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Listen. You're not going to praise the Lord for his goodness if you don't know his goodness. Right. And the more you're intimately acquainted with his goodness, mm -hmm. the more you've got to praise him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, when we sing that song every time, every praise is to our God. Yes. Yeah. Every word of word. I mean, without, I mean, every time we play play that, you cannot just sit there. Right. I mean, you'll you'll be engaged and just oh, brings yeah. you into a place of this like, yeah. and it just brings so much encouragement, right? Yeah, because really, praise isn't. It's not like God is saying there. I need someone to praise me to make me yeah. feel better about yeah. myself. You know, it's yeah. like that scripture in Psalm eight. You know, it's telling you uh, that praise will. Where am I? It will uh, steal the yeah. enemy and the avenger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. 
And you know what? When you stop and you think about it, yeah. <clears throat> when you begin to praise the Lord, you're praising the Lord for his goodness. Yeah. And you're remembering all, you know what you're doing? You're magnifying the Lord. He's getting big in your eyes. Yeah. And so, I mean, yeah, let God arise and his right. enemies be scattered. When you make the, see, when we're feeling oppressed or depressed, the enemy is really lying to us and getting us to agree with his lie. Right. He's but when you begin yeah. to praise God, you're not allowing the enemy to have inroads into your mind, but right. you have determined the Lord is my strong tower. The yeah. Lord is my refuge. The righteous run into it and they are saved. So I'm going to make a whole lot about God. Amen. Yeah. And as I magnify the Lord in my own heart, then all of a sudden, who oh, what's this? You uncircumcised Philistine. Right. You don't be talking to me. But he's with me. Man. Yeah. You know, we walk into, we were talking about this the other day, how that it seems like, you know, and, and you said the scripture uh work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I love that. Yes. What that means is to stand in awe of God, who is your life. Yes. You know, and yes. uh, that, that's how that salvation is worked out. Because the same life that's, that was in Christ is in you. You know, okay. you stand yeah. in awe of God, who is your life. But how death is trying to continue to magnify itself, you know, uh, and all that death is, is trying to continue to magnify itself in the eyes in, in you know in our eyes so that we are then depressed that's the fruit yes. of us standing in in awe of death is the, the fruit of that is depression and that's anxiety right. and you can walk in we were talking about this uh of course this is october so you have all the halloween are about but you walk in lows they have they have they have uh these monsters that are 12 foot tall now yeah i saw that i mean they're they're getting bigger and bigger and this is no coincidence i'm telling you these things went from like maybe five foot six foot they're like 12 to 13 foot <laughs> but that's it's like the wizard of oz right the man yeah. the old man behind the curtain yeah you know he tries to magnify this image of of himself in a way to put fear strike fear in the hearts of people so they'll stand in awe of death and that right. life, you know, right. and it's just amazing how that, and it's, it's that Goliath again, they, they, the whole army, God's army was totally intimidated and, and fearful because they stood in awe of Goliath. They, they were listening to his report about them instead of the report of the Lord. And, uh, it's just like, that's why we need to find out. listen, Jesus abolished death. Yeah. He abolished death and brought life and immortality to life to, to all who believe. You know? Yeah. Well, but it's it, not going to do you any good if you don't believe it. it uh, in Nehemiah, it said, uh, 8, uh, 10, it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So what you're doing, you're capitalizing on him and his joy that's in us rather yeah. than what's out there, you know? Yeah. So, you know, it's what you're focused on. Right. Right. And you know, go to Zephaniah, what, 317? And it says, he rejoices over us with singing. Amen. With yeah. Joy. So the joy of the Lord is our strength. Right. It's knowing God's joy in us. That's it right. Strengthens us. Boy, that would still be Avenger. Because <clears throat> so many times people can get down on themselves because of their wrong behavior right and when if if you think that your strength is in your joy it's not in your joy it's in god's joy over you and and then you go back to romans 15 13 may the god of hope fill you with all peace and joy 
not of all hope. His yeah. joy is over us with sin. Yeah. So, yeah. Peace and joy is the fruit of believing God's good view and opinion. Of yes. Us. And I think it goes back to what we're saying, too, is this uh, what you behold and what you move in, what you feed on is going to stir up what's already in you. It goes back yes. to that acknowledging, acknowledging, you know, maybe um, it says that the communication of your faith be a, a, a effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in yes. Christ. Yes. So it's it's like it's it's there. You know, you have this treasure in an earthen vessel. You're you're filled with the fullness of God. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. What, what, what happens, needs to happen is that constantly just being stirred up and and um it's acknowledging you know, what you've got acknowledging what you have you know? we're not looking for something that we don't have no i am i am not going to receive any more than what i've already got no i i'm finished you got as much jesus as you'll ever have Absolutely. Amen. and if i was to put up this body my spiritual being that I am is perfect. Nothing will be added to it. It's perfect. The thing is, then I won't have the blockage of this soul. Right. Okay, because the only thing that is stopping me from knowing who I am in the spirit is this mind right. that is not renewed. But I mean, I can come to renew this mind to come into a total agreement. Well, I mean, Jesus, Jesus didn't have that problem because he didn't have a carnal life. No. He was, he was not of the, he. He was the only one in his right mind. He was. Okay. Yeah. And it was so, yeah, he had it going on. But he's saying, listen, you can have it going on too. There yeah. is nothing that Jesus did yeah. as he walked this earth, ministering, doing good. There's nothing that he did we can't do if we'll just come into agreement <laughs> with, I've got the same Jesus in me that was walking over there, even bigger because now he's glorified, you know? I don't like anything. Well, isn't we talked about complaining too? Isn't complaining a uh, saying that I lack something? Yes, or absolutely. Yeah. That, right. Yes, it is. And and, so, and listen, well, the solution is is I lack nothing for life. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you know, yeah. remember how faith speaks. It says. In Romans 10, faith speaks on this wise. Faith has a voice. It speaks. Mm -hmm. And Paul said, it is written, we believe, therefore we have spoken. Yes. We, having the same spirit of faith, believe, therefore we speak. Faith speaks. And faith speaking is the heart being persuaded of what God believes and it coming right out of our mouth when we confess it. Mm. Omologeia, to say in union with, okay? There's power there. Mm. But guess what? Satan wants us to come into agreement with him. And speak his words. <laughs> yeah. My husband... He says, oh, Beulah, my ankle hurts. I said, are you telling me your ankle is speaking to you? You better speak to your ankle. There you go. That's, that's the mountain. I always, thought that, I always thought one reason God gave us the gift of tongues so that I wouldn't speak in words I shouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll just start speaking in tongues. <laughs> Let me tell you something. In the perfect will of God, man. Pain is has a voice. Yeah. 
It's speaking. Mm -hmm. Look, you're sick. And then if your heart believes it, what's coming out of your mouth? You're old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just one step to promotion. <laughs> Our rocket scientists to figure this out. We were created in the image of God and in his likeness. And he said, boom, and it was. And he right. said, I give you authority in my name. You speak to the mountain. Right. Speak yeah. to the mountain. Don't let the mountain speak to you. Yeah. So I got to say, hey, be God in Jesus' name, you stinking liar. Yeah. Yeah, I talk to myself a lot. I talk to myself hey, a lot. if you, you let me tell you, <laughs> yourself will try to speak to you, and you've got to, you've got to rule. You've got to allow the spirit of God to rule over your soul. Well, people look at me weird when I go through a a, a grocery store, and I say, "Shut up." <laughs> They're going, I better move away from this person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. If they could hear what you heard, they would be glad that you said shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's. Um... That's true, though. It's true. Oh, yeah. Still listening to okay. the voice of the stranger. But yeah. for the voice of our Lord. He you just know? wants you to come into agreement. Yeah. The Lord says if two shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done. Yeah. Well, who do you want to agree with? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, this big Rick, good. Rick, I need you to connect with a lady that used to live in our neighborhood. Her name is Betty. Yeah. And she moved closer to her daughter a few years ago. And she's in Iowa now in assisted living. She just turned 100 in wow. September. And wow. her mind is as sharp as a tack. She's a Christian lady. Um, she was a school teacher. That was her career. Mm -hmm. And um, she's doing great. I mean, she's legally blind, but she still emails some of us. Very large font, but she emails back and forth. And she's just amazing. And so there was a, we sent her some things from here and, and she had a big celebration in September for her hundredth birthday. So I need you to talk with her and uh, she'll encourage you to keep going because yeah. you'd be a young boy to her. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. so if that encourages you at all, 65 is nothing when you're a hundred. <laughs> she's a beautiful lady. Very, we all, say she used to be in our neighborhood bible study which yeah. we still have but she had to move away to be closer to her daughter but we all keep telling her buddy we want to be like you when we grow up <laughs> you know so, I, love I, to encourage you. I would love to i love talking to folks like that i really do that yeah. uh like that and they're in mine right mine at 100 years old that's that's quite an inspiration a couple of weeks ago I was riding my bike with a kid in the neighborhood. He is uh, six. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, where do you get all your energy? <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. went a mile and a half with me. He goes, I'm tired. I've got to go home now. I said, okay. But I said, yeah. you know something? I said, you know, sometimes because he'd been having a hard day. And so uh, I'm trying to teach him to think right. Mm. And I said, uh, I said, you know, sometimes you just got to do it. You know, mm. even if you don't feel like doing something, you do it. I said, you know, like these basketball players or football players, they get up. These marathon runners, they get up early in the morning and they train. And I'm sure they don't feel like it sometimes, but if you want to be excellent, yeah. you have to do it even when you don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. I said, sometimes you might not feel like being nice. Mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. but 
but you know what? You don't go by the way you feel. You go by what's right. And he's like, yeah, sometimes you just got to do what's right because it's the right thing to do. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, man, brother. <laughs> he had some wisdom. <laughs> always feel like doing yeah. something, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, you you do it. You, as Paul says, I bring this body into subjection. Yeah. Last act of preaching to others, I myself, I'm a castaway. <laughs> That's yeah. bad. Yeah, finish strong. Right? Body into <laughs> subjection. Bring the body, the soul realm into subjection to the spirit. It was always supposed to be the spirit to be dominant, mm -hmm. not for the soul to be dominant. The soul has to be conquered by the spirit. Mm -hmm. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind that mm -hmm. you may be able to prove the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that is getting this mind, this soul realm renewed to what God says. And, you know, it's like sometimes your emotions may be over here and, you know, want you to go this way. You go, no, 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 that's not the way we're going. This is the way we're going, you know? Bless the Lord on your soul. By your feelings. Yeah. Well, this has been good. Yeah. Good. Before we go, could we pray for my friend real quick? Sure. He just texted and said he could use some positive thoughts. Today is hard. Ooh, wow. Praise the Lord for the invitation, my brother. <laughs> Amen. What's his name? Richard. Richard. Yeah, he's the one that's been going through a really hard time these last couple of years. Praise God. He's inviting you to get involved. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, thank you, God, that I'm with all of you today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just lift up Richard to you right now. Yes, Lord. Lord, he's calling out for help. Yes, yes. That's all we need to do is call out for help. You're a very present help in time of trouble. And Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would manifest your goodness to him today, Lord yes, God. Lord. Father, that you would just cause him to feel your presence and your goodness and your intervention in his life. Thank Lord. you, Lord. Father, that he will know beyond all contradiction that you can be in his life yes, because he asks. Yes. Lord, you said we have not because we ask not. Well, he's asking, Lord, and we're mm -hmm. saying give it to him. Yes, Lord. Both barrels. We agree. <laughs> and your mercy. Yes. Amen. 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 What's this Amen. 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 Man, amen on that, amen. Amen, amen. Janet, did you have some? Could you pray for my brother as well? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's, he's going to. Father, we just lift up yeah. uh, Dean to you right now, yes, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, I just speak wholeness to his body. Yes, Lord. I speak healing. To his body. Yes, Lord. I speak strength to his body. Yes, we do, Lord. And Father, I speak encouragement mm -hmm. to his heart, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus, I just pray, Father, that you would bring people to his bedside that will be an encouragement to him, Lord yes, God. Lord. And Father, that you will just ignite the faith that is in his heart, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord. And I pray, Father, that you would give him a hunger to listen to your word, yes. that he could be strengthened thereby, Lord God. Yes. Open his eyes to see, Lord, and his ears to hear, 
everything that you have to say yes, to him. Strengthen him with all might in oh, the yes, name, Lord God. Father, let him let him see himself whole. Oh, yes. Let him be able to see himself. Oh, yeah. let him see himself whole and walking in Jesus' name. Yes, Father. Let it begin in his imagination, yes, Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. so that he can see it and he can walk right into that yes, picture. He has to see it first, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, give him a picture in his heart, Lord God. That he can grow into. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Donna's uh, report. Speak that word to him, Jan. Speak that word to him. I will. Uh, Donna, she uh, she sent us a picture of her sitting up knitting. You know, crocheting. Oh, sure. And uh, she yes. said a happy birthday. And it's just like, just the word. This is just so, so good. Because I knew there was, man, there was, there's a little bit of warfare going on. <laughs> mm. But it was actually the word that was just setting uh, some people free, you know, and that the yes. enemy didn't. And it's just the power of the word, how the word yes. just works to, to set people free. And Absolutely. it's just like, the end says that, uh, that it's just the word that just worked to to bring her out of this place of, you know, what that we're talking about, where you're yes. standing in awe of, of of things you shouldn't stand in awe of, you know. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And it just reverses that, you know, yeah. and it just uh, yeah. so it just yeah left left to our own left to our own devices, mm -hmm. you know. People don't realize that we meditate. We are creatures of meditation. Yeah. We meditate all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a question of what are you meditating on? Mm -hmm. And Satan wants to make yeah. something big in your eyes. To occupy. So that so. you just keep spinning on that thing, spinning on it. And the more you think on it, the bigger it's getting. Yeah. And so sometimes you know we need intervention yeah we yeah. need somebody because i tell you something i can mm -hmm. see somebody that is oppressed a yeah. mile away you know and it's like i can see they're thinking on something they ought not to be thinking on yeah. Yeah. and i've got to come in there with a thought that is so beautiful that it will captivate their mind and mm -hmm. cause them to spit on that thing you know and then as they begin to meditate on that, God's getting bigger and bigger in their eyes and it just pushes out all the darkness. Yeah. But we need one another. We do. Mm -hmm. the body needs the, needs the body. Amen. Well, Jim, will you want to close us in a word? For sure. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we can have this privilege of uh, being together and yes. in sharing in our the things that you give us lord we we become stronger in unity with you yes, and with lord. each other lord bless each one today and give us uh, an attention of your thoughts lord yes, jesus. as a result of this meeting today let us grow as we go Thank in you, jesus me. name amen. god bless you everyone amen amen, amen. amen. You guys god love bless you. god bless Bye, everybody. Love you. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you.